today we're going to discuss yeah, together with uh, Ms. Helena. Uh, she's the Director of Regulatory Affairs and Licensing from the Telecommunications Regulatory Authority of UAE, TRA. Welcome, Helena. Thank you for inviting. Thank you. Um, Helena is the Director of Regulatory Affairs and Licensing in TRA UAE. Uh, with the aim of promoting competition in the telecom sector in the UAE, her primary responsibilities include managing uh, key areas of licensing and interconnection, develop development of regulatory instruments, as well as implementation and enforcement hereof. Responsible for interconnection, she's also responsible for interconnection disputes brought before the, the TRA. Uh, her background is Thales on Denmark and Dong Energy. Uh, she holds a Master of Science, um, BA. Uh, she's also Master's of Commercial Law and Economics. Welcome, Elena. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, we also have Annalise Reinhold. Uh, she's the Senior Vice President Legal uh, of DU. Uh, Annalise is the Senior Vice President and Legal Affairs for DU. Uh, and you, you all know what DU is. Uh, before joining DU, Annalise was Group Legal Counsel for Qatar Telecom. So she's taking a good amount of, uh, <laughs> let's say, fertility to, do, to do this, today's discussions. Um, uh, during her career, she has held a variety of legal regu regulatory roles, both in-house, including seven years with the Cable and Wireless Group, and in private legal practice. Uh, Annalise qualified as a lawyer in her <coughs> native Australia and holds degrees in both law, law and economics. Welcome, Annalise. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, today's discussion is about the, uh, an interesting subject. Uh, we will see how interesting it is about the infrastructure sharing. And we have uh, one attendee from the, from the operator side and one attendee from the regulator side. Uh, unfortunately, the third uh, attendee, um, Mr. Sasha uh, Dudler from Mobile, he couldn't make it due to some last minute <laughs> changes. So three of us will try to cover uh, the subject today. So I would like to first start with the question of, from regulator side and operator side, first to set the framework. Like, what do we understand about um, infrastructure sharing? You can start, please. Uh, well, that's obviously a very, very broad question, um, Gurkhan, thank you for that. But I, I think when we're talking about infrastructure sharing, we, we need to keep in mind always um, what is the objective? What, what is the ultimate objective of having some kind of infrastructure sharing arrangement? And I think really that um, the objective must be to ensure that there is some form of sustainable uh, competitive differentiation at the retail level ultimately because that that is the, the whole point of the exercise is to get to a stage where although there's only <coughs> potentially one set of infrastructure being used there is still a sufficient and sustainable level of retail competition that gives customers uh, choice uh, uh, which they can benefit from in the marketplace so it's important not to lose sight of that overall objective uh, before you start leaping into the detail of you know, developing the particular mm -hmm. type of, of model and, um, uh, and, and the mechanism for enforcement and, uh, and the regulatory framework. Thank you. Um, as Annalisa Reinhold mentioned, it, we, we need to keep in mind what is um, the, goal to, uh, the goal for the sector. Um, the TRA is, is putting much emphasis in, in uh, the consumers in the end, as Annalisa also mentioned, the retail level. Uh, what is the benefit in the end for the retail level? And of course, with the focus of the overall ICT sector. Um, it's a fine balance of, of promoting the ICT sector, but not doing it compromising um, the retail level or consumer interests. So it's a fine balance of, of promoting competition to the benefit of the consumer, but doing it in a manner where um, nobody loses. There should be a win-win situation. And in a market like we have here, there are obviously different interests um, to be maintained. So it's, it's a very interesting discussion, uh, and I'm glad to be part of it today. Hope we won't sit here all day, though. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But again, it's, it's, the balance is a very, very fine balance. And um, in order to fine tune the focus and, and the, the where, to, where to interact is, is to say what is the ultimate goal here. And each part of, of both the sector and the government, the industry, the TRA, the consumers, Eric's and all the suppliers, they all have a different goals. They all have different goals. But in the end, in order to maximize the revenues for all, it, it, um, access to infrastructure is very, very important. Thank you, Helena. <clears throat> so these are generally the, let's say, the general framework about the uh, infrastructure sharing. So are there any any specific characteristics uh, in the UAE which makes sharing of infrastructure particularly important uh, compared to other countries? So both of us, both of you are welcome to answer to that. Um, from a regulator's point of view, I think this, um, this, the UAE is quite interesting because there are obviously only two, two operators. Um, in the game, in the full-scale game, and especially on the fixed infrastructure. So the, the parameters here are much different from, from other places and other places where we benchmark what might work in one region or country um, might not work here. Um, you have two operators which each are in the control of their own infrastructure in their separate um, areas. Uh, I don't think you see that much happening uh, in the same direction in, in the Nordic countries in Asia and other countries we usually benchmark ourselves with. So it's 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 a different it's a different um, um, playing field here. I think that's that's right. It's important to look at the the competitive dynamics in the marketplace and then ensure that the regulatory framework is is developed, which suits uh, that sort of um, environment. I think in the, in the outline of, of today's presentation, there was uh, some mention, for example, of um, infrastructure sharing uh, on, a com on a competitive uh, or purely commercial basis. Uh, and for example, that type, of, uh, that type of structure may not be appropriate in a, in a market such as the, f the fixed telecoms market in, in the UAE, where you do still have a significant issue, um, significant market power, I guess. Um, with the incumbent and um, perhaps a smaller number of competitors in the market than there might be in, in some other markets around the world. Okay, so uh, again coming back to, since we are specific about UAE today, coming back to UAE, uh, I wish we had uh, some respected attendee from the incumbent as well. That would be more fruitful discussion. <laughs> so it's like sort of it's going to be like the independent party and one-sided discussion. We, we did actually invite someone from Etisalat to join us on the podium, but yeah, she I'm wasn't sure. very enthusiastic <laughs> yeah. five sure minutes ago. Ask questions. <laughs> yes. So in the case of UAE, um, is infrastructure sharing, sharing will be most effective when enforced by the regulator, or? if sort of deliberate collaboration between Etisalat and you, um, Annalise, what do you think? Uh, I, th I think that the uh, state of competition in the marketplace in the UAE, particularly in the fixed sector, is such that there is a need for um, a significant amount of regulator involvement in infrastructure sharing arrangements, in, in brokering those and making sure that, that something that is sustainable uh, is the ultimate outcome. Mm -hmm. And what about you, Helena? Well, in the idea world, there wouldn't be a regulator, would there? But um, as Annalisa said, we are in a state where um, the market forces uh, can't complete the task of, of uh, competition. Uh, therefore, the, the regulator plays an important role. And um, I think it's a balance between trying to mix um, incentivized regulations um, which is not always possible, and then you need some more direct regulations of how to, to uh, reach the goal of sharing of infrastructure. So, and in a market like this, where there are only two operators, it's um, the incentivized uh, regulation is, is not as easy. 
uh, as it could have been. Okay, um, at the core of all deregulations, at the end of the day, the most important thing is what what's the deregulation will contribute to the to the consumers, to the subscribers. So, from that perspective, uh, what are what are the subscribers in UAE will receive if, for example, one day do and salad is in strong cooperation, either enforced by TRA or not? What are the consumers going to receive out of this? What do you think? Well, I think ultimately, as I said at the outset, the idea is that they should. Uh, receive more choice. So there should be competitive differentiation of products and services at the retail level, not some kind of communism where it's a bit like Henry Ford, you know, you can have only one colour of car as long as it's, or any colour of car that you want as long as it's black. You know, you want to make sure that there's a lot of different options available uh, in, in, at the retail level in the marketplace, but that those options are sustainable and are not going to be short-lived and then unable to be supported because it's not actually um, cost-effective for uh, the uh, non-incumbent operator, for example, to continue to provide them, or even for, you know, not cost-effective also for the incumbent to continue to provide. So sustainability is important, but sufficient competitive differentiation is also key. Okay. Do you want to add anything, Elena? Um, yes, I would. Um, as the customers are the ultimate focus as well for the TRA, it's I agree with uh, Annalisa stating that the sustainable competition is the overall goal here. Um, in that, I mean, it's very important to, to create a market where innovation is allowed, where innovation is, is incentivized, um, and in order to provide products, diversified products, good quality products for the consumers, um, in order to avoid a, a, a more or less non-competitive and, and non-developing market. For the end consumer, it is all about having choices, having uh, reasonable prices, and attracting new investments, attracting innovation, and tra attracting development. So you need to create a market that allows for that. Okay, thank you. Um, yesterday, I, in one of the telecom magazines, regional uh, telecom magazines, uh, I read an uh, article about like uh, now do you and it sell out with the under the moderation role of TRA discussing the local loop unbundling. So this local loop unbundling is part of this infrastructure sharing plan, right? Is there a set calendar to terminate, to finalize the negotiations and... What is in, um, I don't know if you want me to respond to that. <laughs> <laughs> what is in the pipeline now is an extensive work uh, that has been done in cooperation with Etisalat and Do. Um, on providing bitstream access and that has been a project that's undergone quite um, quite a revolution for us since it, the scope is quite big. Um, we are at the stage of the second testing phase and um, we're almost there but the test is, is still undergoing and we need to see what the results are, how far we are on that. But it's, just to correct you, it's the, it's the bitstream access that is the focus at the moment. Okay. And what are your good wishes and hopes, Annalise? Well, obviously, we're very enthusiastic for the testing phase to be completed and for uh, products to be able to be launched as soon as possible. It has been a, a, you know, an extensive uh, process, but obviously there's a lot of detailed work that has needed to be done, and the TRA has been a great support. Uh, in the whole uh, negotiation process. Okay, uh, the last last time that I witnessed this tra uh, transition, it was in Turkey. Uh, the did framework and the uh, regulations, let's say, deregulation was completed for local loop unbundling, maybe three years ago, and still there is no practical work in local loop unbundling, and all the alternative operators are suffering from that because. The main thing is not the TRA, but the main thing comes from the incumbent, naturally, because there is sort of like an offense method and defense method, and at the end of the day, incumbent uses all the tools to defense themselves, and that's very natural. Hopefully, it's going to be moving faster in, uh, in the UAE. I, I think the um, experience that you had in Turkey is, has been common in many countries around the world, yeah. and um, you know, to an extent, it, 
you know, it has taken a long time here as well. I think that's just the nature of the uh, of the drivers and incentives and the, the detailed level of um, regulation and negotiation that you have to get into in order to actually achieve an outcome. Okay. Uh, just for the benefit of audience that uh, they are coming from different regions, uh, especially from the Gulf region, uh, which country do you think completed that? Can we say Bahrain? Uh, they have the framework ready and competitive framework. What do you think, Helena? Uh, I think Bahrain is, is um, probably a little more ahead of what we are here, and it's a good country to benchmark against. Um, the privilege we have here in the UAE is that um, we have the technologies, we have the consumers, uh, we have the operators, and we have a lot of experience to, to, uh, to get from other countries. Uh, we just need to fit it in to what's suitable for the main goals and what is suitable for this region. What is, is well, you can't just apply what has been, for example, done in, in Bahrain. It doesn't necessarily apply in this region, but it, there is a good, uh, a great deal of experience to gather, not, not only from Bahrain. Okay. Um, me. I, think, I think the TRA, because they have done extensive research in benchmarking, are probably best placed to, to comment on the comparators and have better visibility of that um, than I have. But I, I do agree that Bahrain does seem to be probably in this region uh, the most uh, advanced, I guess, yes. so far <laughs> yeah. in how they've approached things. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty much done with my questions. Uh, if you want to make, before moving to audience for questions, if you have any specific points that you want to uh, mention, please take the lead. Well, I would like to state uh, briefly, just again, thanks for inviting the TRA to this uh, session. Um, the industry has been working <clears throat> very hard on, among, this pro among other this project that uh, we mentioned before in order to allow uh, sharing of access and access to infrastructure and access to customers have, have um, many degrees uh, and many aspects. There are many different, um, different ways to look at it. The TRA is, is, is evaluating all kind, all, sorry, I can't look at you because then please, I can't please, reach. Please, please. <laughs> Uh, the TRA is looking into all the scenarios um, that are possible. We're evaluating them uh, with the industry as much as possible. We're evaluating it with uh, our mission of enabling a competitive um, ICT sector. Uh, we are evaluating in not least in the aspect of the end consumer, what are the benefits for the end consumer, but also keeping in mind, keeping it uh, it's difficult to incentivize um, the stakeholders, except, for example, the incumbent to, to give up market share. So how do you do that? And um, as we've been di discussing before, we are benchmarking to other countries. What has been done? What were the results? What were not successful? What were successful? And what would they be, would, would the same approach be successful here? But it is, it is a challenge, it's an interesting challenge and it's an interesting time that we are entering into because a lot uh, of work has been done already, uh, but a lot of work is still, still remaining to come. I think um, I'm very interested to hear if anyone in the audience has questions and I'm also conscious that I might be keeping them from their lunch break, so <laughs> perhaps okay. we should go to questions Thank now. You. Uh, any questions, specific questions from the audience? Uh, can I pass the microphone? Working? Yeah. Um, I heard the call for a comment from the incumbent. Um, I'm Agne Magoskaita from Etisalat. So I just wanted to <laughs> express a very short comment into the discussion. I, I welcome the discussion very much, and um, it's a very useful discussion, and we've had this discussion for a while with the TRA as well as with Do. And um, I really uh, would like to express my support for the TRA's approach, a balanced approach towards um, a balanced competition, um, sustainable competition, and um, uh, support for consumers. Um, so I think, and at the same time, 
supporting the return on investment that both companies are making. Um, I think um, this is a, quite a unique market, as, um, as uh, Mrs. Helena was saying, that we have two network operators that are, um, in terms of fixed network, for example, they have their own infrastructure in different territories. And um, it may be that the TRA might make a decision that both operators are actually dominant in each of the markets because of this unique situation. So, of course, those obligations that uh, might be applicable because of this market power, they will probably have to be applied to both operators. Um, in terms of um, access to the network, I think the TRA has to be quite careful in sustaining um, infrastructure competition, not only looking into service competition, because this is quite important in, in this unique market. Um, in terms of Bitstream, um, thank you very much for, for raising this, because it's true that uh, both companies, as well as the TRA, have put loads of effort um, into the Bitstream agreement, Bitstream access agreement, and it will hopefully um, be launched fairly soon commercially. Um, and I really hope, and Etisalat um, uh, really hopes that Bitstream access uh, will satisfy the needs of Do, and the same, of course, will satisfy a lot of need uh, for Etisalat to have access to Do's infrastructure as well in their territory. So just, just a brief comment, uh, basically, that uh, the market is moving and competition is there. It's quite a harsh competition. Uh, but the approach from the regulator, I think from regulatory side, has to be really balanced to ensure that there is support and there is um, uh, development and there is investment. Um, at the same time, um, the consumer is satisfied as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Agnes. Thank you. Uh, so far, I have heard um, regulatory role, you know, vis-a-vis -vis do and consumers. Uh, and in the past two days, I've also heard a uh, discussion that operators moving toward metering services, going away from flat rate. Uh, we have also talked about how the ARPUs are under pressure and ROI, return on investment, is an issue. Uh, and people are talking metering for that reason also. Uh, it seems to me, and I'd like to hear your comment, that when uh, discussion involves, start involving utilities, uh, and if you look at the electric or water utilities or other utilities, over there the relationship is more like transactional. But when you start looking at telecom, the, whatever work is done using telecom that is not really, that goes much beyond transaction because it creates a lot of value for the society. It creates a lot of value for the country in terms of development, taxation collection, so many other industries benefit. So in this case, uh, what do you think regulator, how big they can play so that on the one hand, the operators and everybody in this ecosystem makes a good return on investment but because there is so much value and taxation being generated, the uh, subscriber also doesn't end up taking all the burden for that. Uh, it's a complex uh, you know, balance between so many factors, but I just wanted to see what your view is in the very large uh, contribution of telecom in terms of this wealth creation. I think... Raising here. One of the missions of the TRA is to enable um, the, IC the ICT sector to be a regional leader. So that is, is in line with, with, uh, with the complexity that you're saying. It is, again, it's a fine balance of creating uh, consumer benefits, balancing the incentive to invest balancing the incentive to, to innovate. Um, so that, and there are many parameters involved in this. There has to be uh, non-discrimination, there has to be transparency. All parties need to understand which, which regulatory world are they operating in. In the end, it's a chain, it's, it's a red threat. However, the telco uh, sector 
whether that's thriving or not is is all depending on are there any consumers willing to buy their their products. It's uh, the willingness depends on the quality of service. Uh, the willingness depends on the pricing. So it's it's a chain, uh, and in this converged society we live in, it, the telco sector is uh, is one of the the more important factors. So. I cannot give you a simple answer to this, and if anyone can answer this question in the audience, I would like to hear it. Uh, but it is, we're trying, uh, from the TI, from a regular t regulatory perspective, we're trying to balance all these um, issues in, not, in order not to kill um, um, competition in one market where we're trying to impose competition in another. Um, it, has, it has to benefit everyone. I don't know if I gave you a suitable answer to that. Can I pass the microphone? Can I pass the microphone? Uh, sir, before positive messages from Agnes about the incumbent perspective, these are very <laughs> positive. Uh, but of course, it, behind the scene, the real world is behind the scene at the end of the day. And, but thanks for your nice messages and sorry for not giving the opportunity to you just comment back with positive messages, maybe. <laughs> Sorry for that. Please. Yeah, better and share infrastructure in response to the market forces and the competition forces, a decline in ARPOs and scarce of investment and so on. However, I, um, I, my question is now uh, to the TRA is, how do you think you are going to force or even provide some sort of uh, incentives to both the incumbent and the other operator to cooperate and share infrastructure and how soon this will happen? Well, in line with enabling uh, Bitstream access as, as the sharing infrastructure mechanism has shown us what the challenging uh, issues are, not only for for the TRA representing uh, the region, uh, the, the country, but also for the incumbent and for due. Uh, there are many challenges and there are many um, issues that needs to fit and need to, 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 um, to be solved in order to create incentives. Sometimes you can't create incentives. I mean, who would in their right mind give up market shares? I don't think anyone will. Um, we have certain markets, for example, like the mobile, markets where we can see that competition is actually quite effective. Now, what, what did we do in order to make that comp uh, competition uh, effective? Uh, we could, for example, look into um, site sharing as a regulated uh, issue where we um, uh, both do an Etisalat and the TIA worked on regulation imposing the obligation to share sites. That could be something we would look into with respect to infrastructure. And as Etisalat stated, they're very, they're very um, positive with the way we're working, but also that they, they, they propose that we not only look into the service-based competition. So there's also the fact that you're probably uh, thinking of the infrastructure-based competition. Um, there are many aspects there, and, and I don't think you can create only incentivized uh, policies where everyone is willing to do uh, what is necessary in order to share. There will be times and there will be um, situations where the TRA, as the role of the TRA, will have to make a determination. This is the way we go. And all parties might not like it, but hopefully it will be for the benefit of, of, of everyone in the end. Thank you, Helena. Uh, I would like to thank you both for your valuable contribution. I would like to thank you, the audience, and I'm warned by the organizers that we need to go for lunch. So bon appetit for everybody. See you in the next session. Thank you.